everybody welcome back to between the headlines you know if you're new to the channel we do this between the headlines show probably once or twice a week we just get caught up on some of the headlines we don't just read the headlines we read between the headlines why do we have to do that well apparently the enemy is running around basically trying to manipulate society down a certain road a preset path an agenda they use news headlines to do that, to influence people's thoughts, actions, and behaviors. So, that's what we're doing here with these Between the Headline shows. We try to figure out what they're up to, what trends that they are, you know, trending, and all these kinds of things. Now, I want to open the show with this image from the Victorian era, 1892. Now, this is unbelievable. Because somebody actually sent this to me this morning. And it depicts the smack of the nation as a snake. And behind it, the angel of death. And a mother protecting her child from the snake. As she runs away. Now, snakes and fangs have long been synonymous with hollow needles. Because that's exactly what their fangs are. Hollow needles. And there are two of them. There's also a split tongue, of course, in a snake. So I thought this was interesting from 1892. Now, let's get into Angelina Jolie. Let me make sure you guys are with me, and then we'll keep going with this, this live show this morning. All right, looks like you guys are starting to filter in here. All right, let's get into this, because Angelina Jolie is in the news again. Now, what is this all about? Well, about two months ago, we started tracking Angelina Jolie, didn't we? Because of her past obsession with blood. Now, of course, these obsessions with blood, with these celebrities, is nothing new. Uh, who's the newest one out? It's talking about drinking blood and rituals. What's her name again? You guys can put it in the chat. I always forget her name. Anyway... Uh, she was into that too. And a lot of these celebrities talk about this. They joke about it. And you know, these blood facials and this and that. Placentas. Just really cringy stuff. Anyway, about two months ago, we broke down Angelina Jolie and her ex-husband, Brad Pitt. And in, we were talking about Interview with the Vampire, which Pitt starred in. It was one of his first major roles. And we theorized about why she might have moved her family to New Orleans with Brad Pitt. And I think they had some adopted children at the time. Because New Orleans, of course, is the birthplace of American voodoo and vampires. Now, there's a series that I'm going to be decoding. It's all about New Orleans and the birth of the very first vampires. Let's see if I can see it here. It's called The Originals. So we'll probably be taking a look at that. I don't like to get too much into these to these like vampire type of series i will take a look at it if there are a few clips i can pull out of it i will but that's really dark stuff and i don't want to expose you guys to that so let's get back to angelina jolie so after she was first on our radar a couple weeks later we looked in the news and she had visited these children in an italian hospital and these children were alleged survivors of the war in New Ukraine. But here was the problem. Remember, the child that she's pictured with had a perfectly healed scar all around the skull of the child. And you could see it because the child had a bald head, which is just really creepy because everything we've been talking about is about baldness and alopecia, isn't it? I don't know the backdrop of why that child's head was bald or why... That child had a huge scar going around the top of their head. But the story, the title of the story was all about her visiting children in a hospital that were from the war-torn New Ukraine. So you expected this child to be one of those survivors. But it just didn't fit, did it? Well, she's in the news again. Why? Because she made a surprise visit to actual New Ukraine. Let's take a look at this. Angelina Jolie makes a surprise new crane visit, meets children. She's always meeting with children. Now, in case you didn't know, Jolie's claim to fame is... Let's try to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see some of these images. 
her claim to fame is that she visits these war-torn countries like a modern Mother Teresa. The problem is, is that she has yet to condemn the very source of all the suffering that she goes to see, which is, of course, American greed and meddling, meddling in other people's businesses. And this is, this is the source of all the suffering. So Angelina Jolie is shaping up to be more of an angel of death, isn't she? She's always dressed in black. Which is just really weird. Let's look at some of these images here. Her with the children. She's got black and white on this time. Oh, there's some color. There's some gray. But, you know, you're in these countries. You want to cheer up these children. If you are a real person and your agenda was true and right, you'd be wearing bright colors, wouldn't you? Yellows and oranges. I mean, after all, it is spring. Now... This alone doesn't really prove anything, but the problem I have with this is the past and this fascination with blood. And you can go back and look at that if you'd like uh, on our channel and, and you can see all this documented. Okay. Now, let's read a little bit of this. Hollywood actress and UN humanitarian Angelina Jolie made a surprise visit to the western New Crane city of Lviv on Saturday. According to this guy, um, he had come to speak with this, she had come to speak with displaced people who had found refuge there, including children undergoing treatment for injuries sustained in the missile, the missile strike. The attack in the eastern New Crane city appeared to deliberately target a crowd of mostly women and children. Okay, so this is basically what this is. It's just to raise awareness to what they are saying happened. Right? They want to put focus on it. So what better way to put focus on the claims that are being made than to pull a celebrity into the situation and then everyone's looking at it going, Wow, that that happened. Those evil those evil Hushins. They're called Hushins because we can't talk about them. Now let's get into our next story here. This is interesting. If you haven't heard this yet, the Supreme Court is considering overturning Roe v. Wade. Now or at least that's what they think uh, want us to think that is happening. Okay, because remember, a lot of this is just to get everything hyped up. They've talked about this before. They're saying they're on the precipice of, of overturning this. And of course, all the lefties are going nuts. Their heads are spinning around because they can't imagine an America where this would be outlawed. Right? Now, let's t read this and talk about what this might mean for America. Now, I don't see this happening, but let's just see what they have to say here. Reaction to report on U.S. Supreme Court a draft A.B. portion decision. A leaked initial draft. See, there's our first clue. This is all hogwash. A leaked initial draft majority opinion suggests that the U.S. Supreme Court is poised to overturn RVW decision that legalized A.B. Uh, to the ocean nationwide. The unprecedented leak stunned Washington. Yeah, this is probably just hogwash, you guys. They're just trying to get everyone's goat. Trying to make everyone freaked out. And ain't gonna happen. I guess we'll see. Time will tell, right? Now. To be or not to be. That is the question everybody knows. That line from Shakespeare's play. Now you see me, now you don't. The spamdemic is over. No, it isn't. Are you kidding me? So, this is the words coming out of Ouchie's mouth. Now, when you or I say this, uh, we get cancel culture, don't we? When you start pontificating about whether it's over or not, or if it's real or not, we get canceled. But these people just contradict themselves endlessly. Let's see what he has to say. So in this article, I mean, where are the fact checkers here? <laughs> Ouchie says U.S. is out of the spam pandemic. So here he says that we're out of it. Then this one says he clarifies his comments. It's not over yet. So which is it? We're out of the acute phase. Oh, that's pretty cute. Anyway, we're not going to spend any more time on Ouchie and his waffling. Man. Now, here's another aspect of the spam demic. Natural mooning of the city. 
which you weren't even really allowed to talk about up until a few months ago. And this is a hot topic on social media, because if you say the wrong thing, you can get banned. Well, they're finally admitting that some people simply don't get VidCo. Now, no, we hadn't really heard this before, had we? Can people be naturally mooning of the city or resistant to VidCo? 19. Let's read and see what they have to say here. Now, here's what concerns me. Is why do they care at this point? Why are they talking about this? Did they not do a good enough job pulling every single last man, woman, and child into this mess? Did the fact that some people simply just didn't get it, does that, is that starting to bother them? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? This article almost reads this way. More than two years into the spam-demic, most Americans have some immunity against the v Rus, either by smacking the nation or infection or a combination of both. But there have been some rare cases in which certain unsmackthenated people seem to have been able to dodge the v Rus, despite being repeatedly exposed to it. This has raised the question whether it is possible that some people are simply immune or resistant to VidCo without having had the v Rus or the smack scene. Scientists have been trying to understand if such resistance exists and how it would work. Now, here's the big red flag okay because every single movie that i've seen on viruses they always find the person that's immune i mean this was the plot line in i am legend this was the central theme they had to find someone who wasn't affected by it in that case it was colonel neville played by will smith and he didn't get it no matter how many times he was exposed to it and so that became the focus. Whereas in this spam demic, they didn't want anybody to talk about or know about naturally immune people. What does that tell you? They tried to hide that fact. They said, oh, that does not exist. Everybody can get it. But now all of a sudden they're talking about people who simply don't get it. And so where were all the epidemiologists and researchers scouring the planet? For people that were naturally immune so that they could base their smack the nation on that rather than this whatever they came up with at warp speed tells you everything you need to know you guys studying these cases researchers say could help the development of the new smack scenes and therapeutics it's been a hard thing to talk about publicly because you say things and then people go oh that must be me see that was why they didn't talk about it because they didn't want people going, oh, no, I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt. I didn't first get whatever I got. I'm not even going to say what it is because I never even got a test for it. But I was out for like a week. It just, to me, felt like it was, you know, like probably on a scale of 1 to 10 of flus that I've had throughout my entire life. It was probably like an 8 because I've had actually worse when I was younger. I haven't been really sick in a long time. But when I was younger, like in my, you know, teens and early 20s, I, I remember having really bad flus that were like worse than that, like chills and sweats and all this. But anyway, whatever I had that I didn't even get a test for, so I don't really know, wasn't that bad. And so, and that I didn't even get until Omicron came out. So I went two years and I pretty much broke all the rules in those first two years. I didn't really wash my hands. I didn't do anything. I didn't wear a mask. I didn't do anything. So if I would have, so something changed with Omicron. It like it like shifted, and I think it like affected some people that normally would have not have gotten the first go around. So they didn't want us talking about that, though, did they? All of that was suppressed on social media. You were not allowed to talk about that. In fact, I caught a strike a couple couple strikes talking about exactly what we were talking about so now all of a sudden they want to use these naturally mooned people to create the next wave of drugs so now look at this you know you may not have been infected because you just got lucky uh, no they were saying this thing was so infectious it's not that you got lucky that's not what happened 
as I just described to you. I was going in and out of stores, you know, you know, with family in the beginning, and then just never, never caught anything. So weird, right? Let's keep reading here. Crotty said he and other experts have been cautious to talk about this topic, which proves my point. It is something that is still being studied and for which there are no clear answers. Risking life-threatening illness because you think something that you don't actually know is dangerous or no is a dangerous proposition. Most of us scientists have tried to be pretty careful. Look, these things we know, but they are possibilities. These things aren't the these aren't things we know, but they are possibilities. A simple potential explanation is that some of those who have not gotten Vidco have just been lucky. Really? You have is that you have a scientific way to prove that? That's a pretty huge statement. It could also be that their behaviors, like wearing a mask properly, avoiding certain situations that would put them at risk of contracting disease, may have kept them protected. Brr, strike two. That's not what happened to me. We rarely know unless it's a household member who are who we got Vidco from. So maybe you just haven't been exposed. Or you've been exposed at low levels. Brr, strike three. Again, did not apply to me. Catherine Choisy, an infectious disease epidemiologist at the University of Texas School of Public Health, told Yahoo News the other explanation, which I think probably accounts for a fair proportion of these cases. A lot of thinking going on, huh? I thought these people were scientists. I thought they were supposed to speak in terms of black and white. Let's see what she has to say. Is that you have had it? Uh, that would be natural immunity. Why don't they just say that here? We know that a lot of cases are asymptomatic. You aren't sick, so you don't know that you had it. Okay, so you had it and now you're not. So anyway, so I'm trying to demonstrate to you how you can read between the lines on this stuff and see that really not much of this makes any sense. They're just saying what they need to say to get as many people as possible to do what they want them to do. That's pretty much what's happening here. Now, we're not going to read the rest of this article because as you can see, it goes on and on and on. And these articles are meant to confuse you. It, they're meant to make you get to the end of the article and then say, you know what? Forget it. It's just easier to go get smacked the nation. That's what they want you to believe because they want you to believe that, that this is way over your head. And if they don't understand it, then there's no way you're going to understand it. And you better just do what they tell you to do. Now, here's more information on Vidco. They're now saying that the deaths are no longer amongst the smaccinated. Or they're now among the smaccinated, not the unsmaccinated. Now, they didn't they just tell us that this was a spamdemic of the unsmaccinated? Well, maybe that was the case before, and that's why they said that. But now, all of a sudden, they're saying... Vidco deaths are no longer overwhelmingly among the unsmaccinated as toll on elderly grows. They made a lot of promises, didn't they? Unsmack the nation people accounted for overwhelmingly majority of deaths in the U.S. throughout much of the spamdemic. But that has changed in recent months. Now this is important, you guys. According to their data, the spam Nimic's toll is no longer falling almost exclusively on those who chose not to get the shots. Now, why do you think that is? By now, with how, you know, virulent this thing is, is that they told us that it's on every surface. You have to make sure that you don't breathe in the air. With your, if you're in a room for 15 minutes with someone, you're going to get it. It's, imp it's impossible not to get it. Okay, so if it's that virulent, shouldn't pretty much every person that's not living in a cave have already been exposed to it? I don't know, I'm asking a question. It says here, the spamdemic toll is no longer following almost exclusively on those who chose not to get the shots. With smack scene protection waning over time and the elderly and immunocompromised who are at the greatest risk of succumbing to Vidco, even if smack the nated having a harder time dodging increasingly contagious strains. The smack the people made up 42% of the fatalities in January, February. 
during the highly contagious Omicron compared with 23% of the dead in September because of the Delta wave. Data is based on the infection and is limited to sampling of cases which the smack the nation status was known. So something, something not right is there. Key explanation for the rise in deaths among the smack the needed is that VidCo 19 fatalities are again concentrated amongst the elderly. Yes, they are. Glad they're finally admitting that. Nearly two thirds of the people who died during the Omicron surge were 75 and older. So, things are changing. Now, let's get into some of these other headlines today. Let's pop off of this whole VidCo thing. I'm really tired of talking about it actually i'm glad it's starting to wind down but they don't even know what they're doing at this point you guys i'm sure you guys are with me we'll get into some of these other stories some of these other headlines now exodus 2022 is upon us what's this all about well it's happening you guys in 2017 we did a video comparing egypt to america and we found a particular part of the Midwest that was right at the crossing point of two eclipses. They cross these two eclipses. The place is called Makanda, Illinois. We told you in that video that there would be a spiritual and physical exodus before the return of Jesus. An exodus of his people out of these politically toxic areas and states and people moving towards states that are more in line with their belief systems and spirituality. Moving to places where people fear God. We found many cities and places near Wakanda or Makanda. Wakanda was one association that we made. Which was some kind of king from ancient Egypt. And we made other associations. We saw that the Mississippi River Valley looked like an inversion of the Nile Valley and the Nile Delta. An inversion, an opposite. And we found all these cities and places that matched up with ancient cities in Egypt. Like Memphis and Cairo. And it all lined up perfectly and we overlaid the two. And we told you there would be an exodus and it would go south. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, some people listen during that time. Would have been a great time to get out when land was super cheap. Building costs were cheap. It was before the spam endemic. Notice the overlays and metaphors. Spam demic, like the plagues. We even talked about the plagues in that video, didn't we? It's like we knew it was coming. 2017. I might screen that video here on the channel during the weekend. I'll upload that so you can see it for yourself and listen with your own ears. It is chilling. But remember, Pharaoh experienced the plagues because he did not let his people go. And God provided a way out for those who listened to get out of some of these oppressive areas inside of Egypt. And it's happening now. People are still leaving, but the Exodus door is closing. Why? Because materials and land costs have gone through the roof. And I think that was all by design. I think the federal government realized that people were leaving. And they were like, oh, we better do something. Let's make it impossible for people to build. Let's drive up real estate prices so they cannot afford to move to those areas. And maybe this is why... Gil Bates bought all this property in Arkansas so that other people couldn't buy it. See how this works? They don't want people in rural areas where they can't control you on a grid. That goes directly against the enemy's plan. So there are still some people, for those with means, who are in the middle of the surge of people leaving these godless places, search of more spiritually aligned states. Let's read about this and see exactly what's going on. Americans are moving out of urban counties like never before. Americans leaving urban counties reached a new high in 2021 as droves of people settled in suburban and exurban, exurban, whatever that means, K 
counties. More than two-thirds of large urban counties saw their populations decline, so people are moving out of Egypt. Here are the migration patterns. People are tired of being in the cities. Let's see here. Rural gaining in these counties in this dark orange color. As you can see, look at this. Rural is gaining. All these places outside of these big cities are growing. Look at East Texas growing. Look at Florida growing. And then exurban and suburban. So this is the trend. Now this crossing eclipse happened like right in here. This is Macanda, Illinois. Right in here somewhere. And these two eclipses across their path right here. First time this had ever happened in America, American history. So, strange things going on, you guys. Look, even now these people out here, there's a lot of drought going on out here. I wouldn't be living in these places. You want to be in a place with lots of water. But these places, the rural is gaining as well. A lot of this is federal land. Again, you don't want to be out here. This is all desert out here. I think the South is probably the place to be in terms of the exodus. Now, what else do we have here in these headlines? Looks like we have states suing the Postal Service. Why? For not switching their fleet to electric power. Then we've been talking all about the electric kingdom and how the powers that be are trying to force everyone into the electric grid. Why? Because you're easily controllable. They want to have control over natural gas that is used to actually make electricity. They want to be in control of the coal that's used to make electricity. They want to pull the puppet strings. They just want you to flip a switch on or off. And they want to be able to flip your switch on or off if they want to. They want to be able to set the price at a certain level. And not have you be able to complain it about it. Or find an alternative source of fuel if you don't agree with the price. That's where all this is headed. And eventually, they're going to say, you know what? Electricity you're using is causing us to have to use more natural gas. And so, you know what? We're just going to turn off your sector of the grid for a while. Till you guys get it together. Till your efficiency goes down and your use goes down. That will be the future. They will start metering out your ability to use energy. That's where all this will be headed towards it. And it's all going to link into climate change. And they're going to say, this is the reason why we have to do this. The electric kingdom. So what's going on with the U.S. Postal Service? Well, 16 states are suing USPS. Two large climate organizations and United Auto Workers Union. Now, what you're going to notice here is this has nothing to do really with climate. It has to do with the money. And these people are mad because... The post office basically are ordering their delivery trucks from this Wisconsin contractor instead of ordering it from the electric contractor. So that's what this is really about. That's what this is really about. Now, this is crazy. They're going to say, oh, it's because of climate, but really, no, they're mad because they didn't get the contract. Oshkosh's announcement that it would build the new mail trucks in South Carolina rather than in a union state prompted the United Auto Workers Union to join the suit. Postal Service has a history, a historic opportunity to invest in our planet in the future. Instead, is doubling down on outdated technologies that are bad for our environment and bad for our communities. Wow. Once this purchase goes through, we'll be stuck with more than 100,000 new gas-guzzling vehicles on neighborhood streets, serving homes across our state and across the country. Oh, those dirty, filthy postal workers. Spreading all kinds of dust and soot and dirt into our neighborhoods with their dirty mail trucks. Oh, shame on you. Unbelievable. And people believe this stuff. They believe this stuff. Now, if a mail truck was running around with two pieces of mail in it, I, they might have a point. But they don't. These trucks are full of mail. This is no different than bunker fuel coming off of a ship in the ocean. Why don't they go after that and make all those electric bunker ships? They won't do that, will they? But yet, 
here they come after our right and ability to you know well i guess it's not a right to be able to send mail and receive mail but basically i think they're starting to slowly you know stage out the u.s postal service everyone does email anyway very few people send paper letters anymore and they're probably just going to eventually phase this out aren't they and so this is the first step to basically do that wow so what else do we have here now oh. while some states don't even have enough places to plug in an electric car look at this renters can no longer find a place to plug in their electric vehicles and they want the entire USPS fleet to turn to electric. Do you see the hypocrisy here? If they can't do it now with what the electric cars that they have, how are they going to do it with adding another 100,000 cars on in the, in the grid? Let's read this. All Hillary Schubach wanted to do is something good for the environment. But after switching to driving in a uh, plug-in electric sedan, she quickly realized a new complication of apartment living. Access to a charging station. <laughs> now, I'll tell you a funny story. Here's a channel I watch. And uh, this lady, she basically cruises around on her, on her bike in Europe and different places. It's actually a really cool channel. I enjoy it. But then she popped off with this video about this electric bike. Electric motorcycle. And she was like, it must, she must have been sponsoring this bike or something because she was like saying all these good things about it. She's like, yeah, I did have to stop probably twice as much as I do when I put gas. But she goes, no big deal. People in Europe are really friendly. And I was able to just pull up to someone's house and plug my bike in and charge it. And I was, uh, I left a comment over there. I'm like, uh, you're not going to get away with that in America. People pay for that electricity. They're not just going to let you plug your bike in and do $10 worth of charging. You know, not to mention all the bad neighbors that you could find yourself in or someone trying to mug you or steal your bike. <laughs> and I left comments. And, you know, some people just want to live in an alternate reality, right? I'm sure there are places in rural Europe where there are nice people who will let you plug something in. People actually are really nice in, in, in many parts of Europe that I've been to. But, you know, we live in a really crazy world. Okay, and if you're, especially if you're a woman, you can't just knock on somebody's door and say, hey, can I plug my bike in and you're by yourself. You just don't do that in, in a modern, in the modern world. You, you're asking for trouble. That's the exact scenario they could find, you could find yourself in a hospital or dead. Okay, so these people are having problems charging their stuff because there isn't enough electricity let's keep reading here shoebox hardly alone even as it appears electric car sales are hitting a tipping point those living in apartments and condominiums around the nation can find it difficult expensive or outright impossible to find a way to plug in when they're at home now understand that when you go to plug this thing in it's not like sitting three, three or four minutes to fill up your gas tank. It can take 30 minutes to an hour to charge the battery. So you're now you're sitting in some strange parking lot. You think these places aren't going to become targets for criminals? They're probably sitting waiting around the corner going, okay, that person's going to charge that thing. They're going to go walk in the store or they're going to go do some shopping thinking they could just leave it there and I'll just take off with their car. I mean, I'm shocked there aren't stories about you know, electric cars being stolen. People don't steal them probably because they don't want them. They realize they're junk. <laughs> That's unbelievable. With nearly one out of three households living in an apartment or condominium, the goal of switching to electric cars to fight climate change and save our gas becomes all the more challenging. So, it's definitely harder, said Joel Levin, Executive Director of Plug In America. The vast majority of EV drivers live in single family houses. Levin said his nonprofit advocacy group advises prospective EV owners to find locations where they can reliably charge on a regular basis. 
It's like Sesame Street. We're reading like Sesame Street here. This is not even real. And while that might, and while that might tough for those, gosh, they need some editors on these pages. While that might be tough, you got to put a B in there, for those living in multi-family buildings, especially older ones with more primitive power stations, there are other options. It could be a mother's house, work, or public charger in the neighborhood. There's not any one solution electric vehicle subscription service called motor that's getting it started in indianapolis said it has satisfied customers who charge at their offices because they can't plug in at home the service says it installs chargers and provides a car with plans starting at 650 bucks a month people can charge their uh, charge where they park it's the best possible experience Standard response to those who say they won't try an EV because they can't charge at home is, you don't live in a gas station either. Okay. So, just more nonsense, you know. They're trying to make it basically fit a round peg into a square hole, and it's just not working. And they're just bouncing around, talking and distracting, and getting you to, you know, think about all the things that don't matter. But then when you actually try to apply something like this, you're just going to run into lots and lots of problems. Now, let's get on to this next story. Apparently, Navy ships are having their own epidemic. Crew members taking their own lives. Let's read about what this is about. USS George Washington sailors detail difficult working conditions after a string of people taking their own life. So this lady's having some issues. This one took her life. This guy. Unbelievable. Let's read about what's going on here now. It says here as her one year anniversary with the Navy approached last May. Hannah Chrysotoma swallowed 196 pain relievers. Her organs shut down. Her brain swelled. During multiple seizures, she stopped breathing. She was on life support for eight days during which time doctors had warned her family that she may never regain a normal brain function. Well, she ended up waking up. And her first question was, why am I still alive? Her thoughts grew more despairing during the next few weeks in the hospital. Then she says, if they keep me in the Navy, if they put me back in the same situation, I'm going to harm myself. And she's going to be successful next time. So, why are they under such pressure? What's going on here? Well, she says she was berated for things out of her control. Oh, I guess she didn't die, so that's her picture there. At that time, she was dealing with some family issues. She's also bipolar. I, I thought they didn't accept people who didn't pass a psych test. Wouldn't they send somebody home if... You know, if that was the case? Now, understand that they've let go of lots and lots of people in the Navy because of their beliefs about the smack scene. Basically downsizing the entire military. A lot of people got let go. So what does that do? It leaves the rest of them with really crazy working conditions, having to pick up the slack, so to speak. It says here, the command pushes you to the point, she said, adding that she had tried to get help but was belittled instead. And unlike a traditional corporate employee, she could not simply quit because she had signed a five-year contract. She could have denied the smack scene. That would have been an easy way for her to get out. There's no putting in your two-week notice and getting out, she said. She said several other George Washington sailors said their struggles were directly related to culture, to a culture where seeking help is not met with necessary resources as well as nearly uninhabitable living conditions aboard the ship. Constant construction noise that makes sleeping impossible and a lack of hot water and electricity. Five of her shipmates have also died, including three within a span of a week this April. The latest cluster of self-harm is under investigation by the Navy and has drawn concern from the Pentagon. So, crazy, crazy, crazy. Pray for these people. These are young people. 
they often don't even realize the choices that they make to join up with these kind of organizations. They have no way, no way of knowing what they're getting themselves in for. And many of these people are God-fearing people thinking they're doing the right thing because they've been brainwashed by the programming to think that this is a noble thing. A lot of these people are following in the footsteps of parents and they want to make their parents proud. And then they find themselves in these situations. Now, let's get into Danica Patrick. Now, for those of you who don't know, she is a NASCAR driver. And Danica Safe and Effective Patrick is now shedding her high beams for health reasons. Now, the symbolism to me is obvious here. And here's the problem I have with all of this. Tens of millions of women have had this done. Right? Had these high beam implants. And most of them have suffered somewhere along the line from having these things in. And what happens when you don't have the money to get new ones, to get them replaced, or to fix the problem? And for decades, the medical industry denied that these implants even cause people harm. Right? And these women's advocate talk shows how many shows did they do on this epidemic that's happening this silent epidemic of people being harmed by these these implants i can't think of any shows that she's done i think i found one in my search of how many shows oprah's done to to talk about this thing for someone who claims to care about women she should have been doing shows every other week on this Here's the show, 1989, she did a show. And so, what's going on with this? Well, there are obvious dangers. And look, a lot of people are trying to warn about this from the very inception of this. You don't put foreign things in your body unless it's to save your life or you absolutely have to because you're going to have problems the body does not like things inside of it i don't care how much they tell you that you know it's a material that's not going to interact with your body your body's not going to know it's there i don't care how much they say that it just always happens and, and the proof of that is that scar tissue forms around it if this thing was totally inert then scar tissue would not form around it would it because your body wouldn't know that it's not supposed to be there. But instead, the scar tissue is formed, which tells you that there is some kind of response that your body is having to this thing inside of it, or these things inside of it. Now, of course, all the people that tried to warn about this over the years and decades were dismissed, disregarded, discredited, and canceled. Why? Because they're safe and effective. Let's read about what happening is what is happening to Danica Patrick. She's speaking out about why she's had her high beams removed. Race car driver took to Instagram Friday to share that she underwent explant surgery, knowing that she had first went under the knife in November 2014. So that was when she first got them. I got them because I want to have it all. I was really fit, but I didn't have boobs, she said. So I got them. Everything went well, and I was happy with them. Fast forward about three years. Uh, to early 2018 so she's there were only in there three years for her and i noticed that my hair was not as healthy and was breaking off that's usually some kind of autoimmune thing isn't it i also gained a few pounds and did not and had no luck losing it she added that by late 2020 the wheels came off in terms of her health i had cycle irregularity gained more weight my hair wasn't looking healthy at all and my face was different shape she continued, so I went down the rabbit hole to figure it out. I did every test that could be done. Patrick listed her symptoms, which included hypothyroidism, dry scalp, adrenal fatigue, face swelling, dizziness, swollen lymph nodes, hair loss, and a slew of other puzzling things she attributed to her implants. I had them removed on Wednesday. She continued saying that she noticed a difference within hours. I could take a 30% deeper breath into my chest already. And I had so much energy when I woke up. So, really weird, right? Here she does a side-by-side -side on her profile here. I don't see much of a difference, but she does. So, she's got to look at her face every day in the mirror. So, 
Here are some more things that she lists, listed. Heavy metal, toxicity, dysbiosis, severe leaky gut, hypoglycemic, low estrogen. This is the, her page here on Instagram. And all these other things. We're not going to go down the list. But I'll scroll down so you can see them. But this is crazy. And it's crazy because so many people I know that have had this done have these exact symptoms. And it's very sad. I don't blame the people who got this. I blame medical establishment who did not warn them. The medical establishment that these people trusted. Trusted with their health and livelihood. And they were lied to. So... In this case, I'm not a big Danica Patrick fan, but in this case, that's off to her for doing this. It's awesome. Now, for those of you that don't know, Dr. Oz is getting cancel cultured. This is crazy. Now, this guy, I mean, I don't know if I believe all this. This could be some kind of psyop. But, you know, because Dr. Oz, he came out of Oprah Winfrey. He was from that whole crowd and cult and uh, that's how he got his start. Well, he started shooting his mouth off about the smack scene and different things and the spam demic. He was going off the script. And so now he is getting canceled. He actually was going to go run for government. I think it was a Senate or something. Yeah, Republican Senate. And he started like making statements about things. And all of a sudden, everything just came off the rails for him. Let's read this. After years of criticism, Columbia University Medical Center has finally, quietly, cut public ties with the celebrity doctor turned Republican Senate candidate Mehmet Oz. Wow. The Wizard of Oz is going down. The curtain has been pulled away from the Wizard of Oz. The claimed teaching hospital where Oz held senior positions, like Vice Chair of Surgery and Director of Integrated Medicine for years, stripped his personal pages from their website in mid-January. The move came after the Huff Post reported um, that Columbia had established a new distance from Oz, changing his title to Professor Emeritus. Truth, however, was that Columbia had made their change years ago. And let's see how all this started. Looks like January 13th, Columbia page documented website modification shows the university removed Oz's profile from the site and disconnected hyperlinks. His name no longer appears in website searches. Just canceling this guy out. Wow. Columbia's affiliation with Oz had been under fire long before he launched a surprise Senate run in late November. In 2015, when Oz testified before the Senate about his endorsement of Shady Miracle Cures, a group of some of the country's top medical professors sent Columbia a blistering letter demanding the renowned medical school fire the Oprah-blessed daytime star. Dr. Oz has repeatedly shown disdain for science and for evidence-based medicine, as well as baseless and relentless opposition to the genetic engineering of food crops. So this is what happens, you guys. You don't believe in GMO food, you get canceled. Worst of all, he has manifested an egregious lack of integrity by promoting quack treatments and cures in the interest of personal financial gain. So, looks like Oz is getting the boot right out the door. Interesting. Now, got a couple more stories for you guys. I know this is kind of a long one. Let me make sure you guys are with me because next we're going to talk about brain to text technology now this is crazy because they actually have a device that can measure brain to text this was back in 2021 you guys and i don't know how i got on this kick but i was like i wonder if they can do that i think because maybe i was thinking about it like man i wish i could just think something and it would text and i was like I'm going to look this up. It says here, for the first time, a team of researchers said it has deployed a brain-computer inter interface to decode the neural signals that represent the writing of letters and turn them into text. A 65-year-old man paralyzed for the next down showcased the BCI, which allowed 
get him to write characters oh 90 characters per minute or approximately double the previous record for writing with a brain computer interface look at this looks like a snake attached to his head look at this unbelievable and then he's like just typing with his brain just by thinking it science alert reported on the brain computer interface breakthrough which the researchers outlined in a paper published in the journal nature researchers working at BrainGate, oh joy a non-profit consisting of neuroscientists engineers and the like have the ultimate aim of helping paralyzed people specifically by restoring their ability to communicate as well as by enhancing their independence in the absence of physical movement now understand that this is one step shy of being able to read somebody's mind which i never thought i would see in my lifetime but yet here it is early brain earlier brain gate research related to turning thoughts of writing into text focused on using neural patterns related to arm movements meaning that previously machine learning algorithms would decode neural signals of arm movements gleaned from implanted center sensors in the brain in order to turn them into movements of a mouse cursor it turned following a bci user to click on let letters on a computer screen in order to write out words this new system however focuses on the actual writing of individual characters whoa that is mind-blowing look at this two snakes in the brain oh look at this uh that's the patch you guys that is the patch the same technology they want to use for the smack scene isn't it micro array patch now interestingly anthony patch who i've known for a long time has, has covered this at length this patch technology look at that weird so this is what's happening you guys this is what's going on in our world now a couple more stories to go look at this we've been talking a lot about copper blue blood creatures of the deep sea haven't we and did you know that there is a worm that uses free copper in the ocean to fabricate its fangs solid copper fangs solid blue blood fangs i mean you guys this is straight out of a vampire movie venomous blood worms grow deadly copper fangs with totally metal trick the worms have the highest copper concentrations of any animal Here's a scanning electron microscope image of a blood worm's jaw. This looks like something out of Star Wars, huh? Four copper fangs. Let's read about this. Venomous blood worm species grows bizarre, deadly metal teeth. And now scientists know how. With a single simple protein that transforms copper deposits located at the bottom of the seafloor into fearsome fangs. Blood worms are segmented, bright red marine worms that can grow to be 14 inches long. They have needle-like teeth made from a mixture of protein, melanin, and 10% copper. The highest concentration in any animal. Now, we used to use these blood worms as bait. Really good, like striper bait in California. You used to be able to buy them, and they would put seaweed in a box, and you could use these as bait. You could also catch uh, surf perch with them as well. Bloodworms live in shallow tidal flats and hunt by burrowing into sand and ambushing anything that they're able to swallow. When a bloodworm is close enough to strike, it inverts its digestive system, which includes its teeth, launching its guts out of its body like a torpedo at its target. Upon contact, the worm's jaws clamp shut and injects its victim with a deadly venom that contains 32 different types of toxin paralyzing the prey in preparation for being eaten alive now had i known this i don't know if i would have used these as bait now i'm reading all this now and i'm like man because that what you do if you stick the worm up to your skin it will attach to you so i guess i was being envenomated by this freaking blood worm these are very disagreeable worms and that they are ill-tempered and easily provoked <laughs> when they encounter another worm they usually fight using their copper jaws as weapons 
to grow these copper toothed stomach jaws which last through the worm's entire five-year lifespan bloodworms harvest the metal from marine sediments on the sea floor then through a previously unknown chemical reaction the worm fuse the copper to their jaws wow that is just creepy that sounds alien almost they start by using this amino acid called dopa and using it to gather up C4 copper into a thick protein rich liquid that exists in a separate phase from ocean water. Then, by using the copper as a catalyst, the worm transforms dopa into melanin. Notice the melanin aspect to this. We've been talking a lot about that as well, haven't we? So, the process enables the worms to easily synthesize a material that would usually require a great deal of effort to make in a lab. We never expected protein with such a simple composition. That is mostly gly glycine and histidine to perform this many functions and unrelated activities. All right, so there's the blood worms with the copper teeth. Now, that this is a story that you guys sent to me, so I'm covering it now. Crazy. Now, here's our last story. Do as I say, not as I do, Bo Jivan being very selective about who he freely lets into America across our borders in terms of refugees. And advocates are not liking this at all. In fact, they're starting to call him a xenophobe. Same accusations they made toward a thump. And this is why I stopped voting years ago, you guys. Because politicians, they like to virtue signal to get votes. But they rarely back up what they say with real action to solve real problems, do they? They'll throw you a bone here and there to pretend like they're solving a problem. But when it comes down to it, they really don't care. Because at the top, both sides are pretty much the same. All they care about is making them and themselves and their friends richer and maintaining the power necessary to continue to do that. They pretty much hate poor people or anybody not feeding into their system of control. And they use poor people like pawns, so that they can destabilize American life and push the globalist agenda. That's what the bottom line is on all this. Afghans subject to stricter rules than new Ukrainian refugees, advocates say. Afghans trying to enter the U.S. to escape the Balitan rule are subject to stricter requirements than the new Ukrainians trying to flee Russia invasion of their country and thousands of afghans even some threatened by the balitan have been rejected now i don't want more balitan people to come over here or afghan refugees because you don't know who you're getting that's not what i'm saying here what i'm saying is is the hypocrisy of bo jivan okay there are clearly two refugee systems one for new ukrainians and one for afghans so you see the problem here? Do as I say, not as I do. Had Thump done something like this, oh, they would have roasted him alive. Let's say he let in the gaff mans, but then rejected the new cranians. They would have said he was a xenophobe of some kind, or whatever. So, this is why I don't vote. This is ridiculous. They're giving these people all kinds of money to come in, and life, and somewhere to stay. They probably get a free phone and vehicle. Who knows what these people are getting? But I can tell you, a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people work 40 hours a week, can't even afford to buy a car. And these people come in and get everything for free. They have to, because what else are they going to, how are they going to survive here? Crazy, right? All right, let me go back into the chat. I know this was a little bit of a longer show today, but we went some time without doing a headline show. So I want to make sure we got caught up. Appreciate everybody that made it out today. Tomorrow, I'm going to be premiering the Rainbow Timeline History of the World. And it's actually going to be two videos edited into one. So you're not going to want to miss tomorrow's show. And since it's a pre-recorded premiere, I will be in the chat with you guys to answer questions and hang out and just have fun. And as we review this amazing and edifying material tomorrow i truly believe that what you're going to view tomorrow is an inspiration of the holy spirit it's not a borrowed graphic i worked on it in inkscape 
I put the whole timeline together. I overlaid the rainbow and then I found or it was revealed to me all these synchronicities and I was just blown away. This is a brand new discovery when we made it and many of you have not seen this rainbow timeline yet. Let's go into the chat, see what you guys are up to. All right. Welcome, everybody. Pretty, pretty big crowd today. Appreciate everyone coming. All right. Can I get a 50 spot? How about a C note? <laughs> right? I mean, seriously. Seriously. That's what's going on. I mean, they're giving away millions and millions of dollars. They're sending millions and millions of dollars over there for something we're not even supposed to be involved with. What happened to Naomi Judd? What happened to Naomi Judd? Is she all right? Is she is she dead? I think I heard someone mention that um on a previous comment. Deliza says rainbow timeline. Yes. So what we did, let me clarify that because if you don't know, if you haven't seen that video yet, again, we took the rainbow the colors in order and we overlaid it onto a historical time biblical timeline of the history of the world all the way back to the garden of eden and we looked at the colors and the colors seem to coincide with the events that actually happened you have to see it to believe it it sounds ridiculous right now but when you actually see how these colors coincide to events that actually happen in the bible you will be blown away so so everyone's saying Naomi Judd passed away. Wow, interesting. What's today? Today's the 3rd of May. So I'll take a look at that. I don't do too many celebrity deaths anymore unless it's something that fits into the Matrix. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, they were saying that she, she did it to herself. Interesting. You know, a lot of these people, they're, you know, they're either taken out or they wake up one day and they realize that they've sold their soul. And there, there are two options at that point. You either throw yourself to the mercy of the Lord and ask for repentance or you just die in your own guilt and the devil has you. So. All right, you guys. Well, I will see you tomorrow. I love each and every one of you. And thanks for showing up today. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe, you guys.